Hello, everyone. This is Jay Dobbins, your host of the Marvel DC Universe Fan Club. We are now at episode 191, and I'll be doing my review on Men in Black International. So, uh, spoiler alert, if you have not seen Men in Black International, I strongly suggest that you do not listen to this episode. You've been warned. So... Um, this is a so this is a spin-off film, of course, and it takes place, um, I guess, at the events of uh, Men in Black 3. But anyway, um, yeah, I know I'm late on this, so apologies. But um, <clears throat> so far, like, okay, in Brooklyn, uh, in Brooklyn in 1996. Molly Wright witnesses her parents being neutralized by agents of Men in Black, it might be for short, while she helps an alien escape, avoiding neutralization herself, as her parents assume that she was asleep. 23 years later, having been rejected in applications for, uh, to the FBI and the CIA on the grounds of her delusions regarding, sorry, regarding the evidence of alien life, uh, she manages to track down an alien landing and uh, track the MIB agents back to MIB headquarters in New York. Although she is caught upon entering the agency, Molly uh, makes an impression on Agent O, arguing that um, arguing that she has proven her skills in finding out the organization's existence and has no life outside of her search for the agency. Convinced, uh, she is awarded uh, probationary uh, agent status as Agent M and assigned to the London branch of the organization. Once in London, M meets T, sorry, Hi T, the head of the um, London branch and manages to arrange for herself to be assigned to Assist Agent H, uh, played by Hensworth, of course, uh, in his meeting with uh, Vungus the Ugly, a member of the alien of an alien royal family, uh, who is a close friend of H. During their night with Vungus, they are accosted by mysterious alien twins, uh, who can manifest as pure energy, who fatally injure. Um, uh, who fatally, of course, injure Vang uh, Vungus, and uh, Vungus passes a strange crystal on to uh, M before he dies, claiming that he cannot trust H with, uh, you know, with it, as H has changed since uh, they last met. So although Agent C um, expresses disappointment with, uh, for H's dealing with the situation, M points out that few people knew uh, Vungus, Vungus's location when he was attacked, which leads to the conclusion that Vungus' location was betrayed by one of uh, the MIB agents present when High T assigned H the uh, sorry to guard him. Uh, nervous over the possibilities of a traitor in MIB itself, IT assigns C and M to conduct an investigation while H is demoted to desk duty. With the investigation suggesting that the twins had DNA traces of the high, uh, a parasite, uh, paras uh, sorry, a parasitic um, race who invade other planets by merging with the DNA of the conquered species. Uh, M learns that um, H and High T were responsible for fighting off a hive, uh, a hive invasion at the Eiffel Tower in 2016. Using a, wormhole, uh, using a wormhole included in the original migration to Earth, but since that time, H has developed a god complex. Demonstrating a demonstrating an uncaring attitude towards his duties and apparently only keeping his job due to high T covering for him due to the soft spot they have uh, for each other. 
uh, H convinces M to join him in following up a lead uh, in Marrakesh, in Marrakesh, where they uh, recover Pawnee, the last survivor of uh, a small group of aliens who were attacked by the twins. Pawnee pledges uh, new loyalty to M, but they subsequently trap. Uh, they're subsequently trapped by MIB agents coordinated by C, um, who has recovered video footage of Vungus passing the crystal uh, on so to M and believes that she is a traitor. With the aid of one of his alien contacts, H is able to acquire a rocket-powered bike and escape with M and Pine, where... Um, where they learn that the crystal uh, Vungus gave M is actually a weapon powered by uh, a compressed blue giant. So, uh, as they repair the damaged bike, um, H's alien contact manages to steal the weapon and take it to um, Riza. Was it? Uh, was it Riza Star? Uh, sorry, Stavros or whatever. An alien arms uh, dealer and uh, H's ex girlfriend. So, traveling to Riz's Island Fortress, the trio attempt to uh, infiltrate the base and recover the weapon, but are caught by Riza and her bodyguard. However, her bodyguard turns out to be the alien that M rescued as a child, and he returns the favor of allowing them to leave with the weapon while he keeps Reza contained. The three are um, cornered by the twins since, uh, sorry, once again, but the twins are killed by High T and the group of agents. Um, so although the um, case appears to be concluded, H&M review um, the evidence and realize that the twins' uh, phrases could suggest that they required the um, the weapon that, to use the hive rather than to I mean to, sorry to use against the hive rather than to use it for the hive. So um, especially when the only evidence of hive DNA was provided by High T, as agency conceded uh, concedes the evidence sorry that the evidence favors the idea of High T's deception. He allows Agent M to follow um, High T to the Eiffel Tower. Uh, so as they travel to the wormhole, uh, M's questioning of H's memory as sorry of his defeat of the Hive reveals that he was neuralized, which is confirmed when they confront High T. So the Hive uh, converted High T into one of them and neuralized H. So he could um, act as a hero and conceal their true activities. The um, high, sorry, the high T hive hybrid is able to activate a wormhole that will draw the hive uh, to Earth. But H is able to draw out High T's true personality uh, long enough for M to use the weapon to destroy High T and the hive infestation trying to reach Earth through the wormhole. With the truth of High T's conversion uh, exposed, Agent O joins H&M in Paris where she grants um, M full agent status and appoints H probationary head of MIB's London branch. Um, I'm going to say the movie I'm going to say the movie was okay. It's not you know, it's it's not the same with uh, you know, Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. You know, it's not the same without Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. But this movie was okay. But I'm gonna give it a, I guess a sixty a sixty nine out of a hundred. Um, first of all, I felt like it was a little too slow, a little too much. But um, I say the writing was okay. I, mean, I I love the special effects though, no doubt about it. But um. I like the CGI, you know. That's I thought that was interesting too. Storyline was okay, but um, you know, I'm not, I wasn't really feeling 
um, Chris Hemsworth and um, what's her name? Uh, was it? Oh, Tessa Thompson. That's her name. I think they're a good duo in Thor and other Marvel films, but as far as different movies like Men in Black, I think we should leave Men in Black, Tommy Lee Jones, and Will Smith. So, but um, yeah. So far, the movie made one hundred and eighty-seven point one million dollars in the box office internationally, with uh, when the production budget was ninety-four to one hundred and ten million. So I guess they got some of that production budget money back, but it didn't do well domestically. But, uh, you know, like I said, at least it made more than $110 million or $94 million worldwide, so I guess that's all that matters. I mean, that's just my opinion. But anyway, uh, that concludes this review. Uh, feel free to visit us and like us on Facebook. We are available on iTunes, the Google Play Music app, and, of course, YouTube.